Hallelujah. For this Come morning, that we have that peace that surpasses all understanding this morning. God, we thank you for your peace this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, just give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, if you came out this morning, you might as well praise him. If you got out your bed this morning, you might as well praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we don't serve a dead God. Hallelujah. We serve the one Hallelujah. true living God. of Jesus this morning. When I think about how much God loved me, Hallelujah. how much he loved you this morning, that he would wrap himself in swaddling clothes to be born for us this morning. Glory to God. Come on. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world. So loved the world. So loved. That he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we're going to call Alana.
Feliz, Feliz Navidad, Navidad de la familia Rivera. Hola, mi nombre es Aida y esta es mi familia. Queremos desearle una feliz Navidad y un próspero año nuevo. Muchos me conocen de estar afuera en el pantry. Solo queríamos desearle que Jesucristo le traiga todo lo que desean y que sigan buscando de Dios, que eso es lo, lo que necesitamos en esta, en esta Navidad, de estar buscando de Dios y de estar con la familia, que es lo más importante. Que Dios los bendiga y los queremos mucho. Feliz Navidad. Adiós. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. A long time ago, down Bethlehem Way, a star shone in the night sky as bright as the day. The shepherds were watching their flocks with care with when an angel uh, when a host of angels appeared in the air proclaiming the son of god had been born to deliver our souls on that cold christmas morning you will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger while the cattle lows a few short decades later he died on the cross without his sacrifice we would all be lost so as you're running around buying gifts and treats to have a big party when your family meets, stop and remember why we celebrate this day. It's not about gifts and food and games to play. I think of that we all have enough. When you think about it, it's all just love. The gift of love is what Jesus gave. In salvation, the day he arose from the grave. To love each other is all that he asks. I know that at times that can be a big task. Just humble yourself and look around. <laughs> I think what you will find will be profound. There are many who can only afford the gift of love. No presents, no tree with a star above. Look into your life and you will find you are blessed. By many who love you, that gift is the best. So when it comes time to bless your meal, ask for your family to be blessed as well. Not with gifts or money or material stuff, but that love and tolerance will be enough. Remember the loved ones who cannot be there, but rejoice there in heaven and not suffering here. And when you see someone who is down and out, don't put them down or have any doubt. Just do what you think Jesus would do. Give what you can to help them get through. If they misuse it, that's between them and God's. In Jesus' eyes, you have done your job. God bless you and enjoy your family Christmas Day. May peace, love, and happiness come your way. And hallelujah. Come on. Wow, that was beautiful, Deja. Wow, awesome. Jesus is the reason for the season this morning. Right now we're going to have Brother Jacob come up and give us another poem. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, I'm Brother Jacob. I'm about to read a poem. The title of the poem is, is It's Still About Jesus. For every Christmas carol we sing, for every, other pre for every pre present of the tree, for every child that smiles with glee, it's still about Jesus. For all the joy season the season brings, for every shiny glowing thing, for every Christmas light that shines without, it's still about Jesus. As the joy of giving is in the air, also the bounty of many blessings should much spare with food beyond measure in which I, which we should shall feast rejoice the rejoicing precious of life makes it all complete giving thanks through prayer is a timely pleasure for the birth of our savior is the greatest treasure for the for with hope and grace in which we are so faithful bound for it is the love of our lord god in which we are found brings to my remembrance how christmas began a king was born to save the souls of all men Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, our Hallelujah. King this morning. Jesus. Come on, somebody, just open your mouth and worship him right there. Come on, let heaven hear you. Open your mouth and worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing 
can stand against. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. Beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Come on, what a, what a beautiful name it is. Nothing, nothing can spare to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the force of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory for you.
What a powerful name it is, Jesus. How we love to call your name, Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand again. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Come on, that's why we're here this morning to celebrate the birth of our Savior this morning. Come on, somebody should be excited this morning. Hallelujah. Something about your name, Jesus. Something about your name. I get joy when I speak your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just want to celebrate this morning. Greetings, everyone. We are so blessed to be alive in the world today. I want to give a shout out to all the KBIM family, our friends and families around the world. God bless you. We just want to thank you here with my beautiful wife, Denise. And um, of course, I have uh, the children around the camera. <laughs> bless God. But, um, you know, it's a, a season where, we, as people always say, it's Jesus is the reason for the season. Absolutely. Jesus is the reason for the season. We are so blessed to have actually come to another year. We are close to ending a year, going into um, uh, 2022. And I'm so excited. We are so excited um, for what God is about to do in our lives. We are pumped we are excited we are staying prayerful we are staying on guard we are being resilient because we know that our our redeemer joint tonight so i just want to encourage somebody out there you may not be in the christmas spirit you know feeling probably you may not have the gift but the greatest gift that we can actually have um today is jesus christ amen so god bless amen. you we love you and pastor Dees, you want to say anything just want to wish everybody a merry christmas and a prosperous new year and as I've been saying all week, there's nothing that God can't do for you in 2022. God bless. God bless. I gotta work in the positions. Sorry about that. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared in the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, a weary rejoices for yonder breaks. A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angels' voices Divine, oh, night When Christ was born Oppression 
shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, his name forever praise we, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. program but let's just take this time hallelujah Jesus we sing hallelujah Jesus our God is with us hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah come on can you just stand to your feet right there come on just give him what he deserves this morning hallelujah Somebody needs to know this morning that our God, Emmanuel, God is with us this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on. He is the reason for this season. It doesn't matter about the gifts. It doesn't matter, but it's his love. He gave us the greatest gift this morning. No matter what you're facing this morning, I want to encourage you that he is the greatest gift, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we're going to call Mila Maldonado up. She has a song for us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give a hand clap of praise. It's a blessing to have the babies that want to worship the Lord. Come on, and she has a message this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepare the way for the coming of God. Make a straight path for the coming of God. Prepare the way for the coming of God. Make a straight path for the coming of God. Pathways make them straight. All the rough land make it smooth. Crooked pathways make them straight. All the rough land make it smooth. Prepare the way for the coming of God. Make a straight path for the coming of God. Prepare the way for the coming of God. 
Come on, somebody. She said, prepare the way for the coming of God. Hallelujah. That's why we celebrate this morning. Because our Savior is soon to return. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, come on. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus. And right now, we are going to call Omari McFadden up. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. What can I give him? Apple that I am. Is that what a chef would? I give him a lamb. If I was a white man, I do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, what are we going to give him this morning? Our heart. That's the gift. He is the greatest gift, but all he asks for return is our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's ready. You go ahead. Ready? Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, to God be the glory. And at this time, I want somebody to get real, real excited. Stand to your feet, begin to shout, because right now we are getting ready to eat the main course this morning. Everything was just an appetizer, but now we are ready for the word of God this morning. Come on, somebody should be excited, because the word of God, the Bible tells us, is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to ask our senior pastor, Pastor Ken Smith, to come and just bless us with the word of God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I can't wait to hear it this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, he's worthy. Come on. Make it straight. Pathway coming of God. Pathway for the coming of God. Make it straight. Pathway for the coming of God. Pathway Where's she at? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Pathway. Pathway. Wait for the coming of God. Make it straight. Pathway for the coming of God. Make it straight. Path for the coming of God. Prepare the way for the coming of God. Make it straight. Path for the coming of God. Y'all put your hands together for this. That's prophetess right there. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Amen. Pathway. Prepare the way for the coming of God. Make it straight. Amen. What? Well, come on. Do better than that for these young Somebody said there is more. 
Amen. That's why we're renovating upstairs so we can make a, a, a children, a youth multi-purpose center there so that, amen, we can teach them. So we, we're just doing whatever we can in this building. So it's about to be renovated on the March, beginning January, right? Beginning January. We're going to be getting a big renovation upstairs and, and make it straight, a pathway for the children. Amen. Wow. I'm just the intermission, you might say, because I see there's more on the program. So I'm in the middle somewhere. Uh, but um, anybody excited about Jesus? If you're not excited about Jesus, are you excited about getting up this morning? Amen. And uh, this is like the, I call it the, the second COVID Christmas. Because this is the second Christmas that we're able to celebrate. Um, Jesus, amen, in the midst of all this pandemic and all this stuff that's happening out there. But, my God, it did not stop us. Amen. It did not stop us. We could have been in our homes and wherever we'll be hiding out, but it did not stop us. Somebody was determined that I'm not going to let anything, anything, somebody say anything, amen, stop us this morning. Look what we would have missed. Amen. Look what we would have missed. And there's more children and more youth and so on. That God, we, we really want to raise them up and, and teach them the pathways of God. Amen. Amen. I am so excited that you all are here this morning. And, and we, uh, I'm, I'm just like really, really, Christmas is one of my favorite time of year. Amen. Along with my birthday. My favorite time of year. And um, I, I get so excited about seeing others get excited. That's why I get excited. Um, not just for the gifts, but just for folks just celebrating the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm going to um, just kind of, uh, I'm just going to talk to you just real quick this morning. I'm not going to do what I normally do. I'm, I'm just, just, just give me about maybe 10 minutes and, and then they'll pick up from where I left off. All right. Somebody say 10 preachers minutes. That means it could be any time, any time at all in, in north of 10 minutes. Wow. Let's give God a hand clap first of all for our director there, Felicia, putting all of this together with our aides and so on, amen, and doing a phenomenal, a phenomenal job with what she is doing. But, you know, um, Jesus becomes that light of the world in the midst of darkness. And most certainly there's a lot of darkness that's been around this world, amen. Even before COVID, there was a whole lot of darkness and there's a whole of the darkness that's in this world. But Jesus has become the, the light of the world. One of the, the greatest, the greatest, um, I don't know if you were around in 1965 when, I wasn't born then, by the way. And around 1965, there was a great big blackout. There was a great big blackout and in the Northeast. And over 30 million uh, people lost power. They were in darkness. Somebody say darkness. They were in darkness, and, and it was the entire Northeast. That means whatever you have was not working electronically. And so they were able to restore that power within, within the, um, the day. But people were in darkness. And again, in August of um, 2013 or 20, 2003, I was born then, before then. So I remember it. There was another power outage here in the Northeast. And this time, over 50 million people lost power. People were stuck on the subways. Just imagine being in a subway and you're stuck. It's dark. Anybody ever been in the New York subway? You ever been on a subway? It is dark down there. When, if light goes, that's it. Uh, just imagine people screaming, getting nervous. Just, just imagine. Matter of fact, just imagine being in your house and you lost power. I saw I, we lost power in our house when our children were, uh, were, they were coming up. And they went frantic because their devices weren't working. You know, the, the, the kids today, they look for their, you know, their, their phones and their tablets and so on to work. And when you lose power, they just, it's like uh, taking the pacifier away from the kids because they go crazy because they're about to, it's about to go out. But when you lose power, when you lose power, uh, uh, something happens. But there was, there was darkness among the earth. And, and um, something had to take place. Something had to take place because, because if you imagine the blackout that took place and all of half of America or parts of America lost power and was in darkness, just imagine the darkness that took place 
when sin entered into this world. That sin entered into this world and, and during that time when Adam and Eve, I'm going to let you know why Jesus, amen. When Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed God and ate from the, the, the forbidden tree, darkness entered into the world. A darkness that mankind have never seen before. Because before then, God said, let there be light, and there was light. So there was light all over the garden. There was light all over this world. There was a light all over. And sin entered into the world, and sin brought forth darkness. Over the next thousands of years, there was work being done to reestablish light back into the world. God sent uh, his prophets. He Ask his people to uh, sacrifice to him. But that did not bring forth the light that the world needed. It did not restore light. When the light was restored, when the Northeast lost power, when light was restored, they just went to the transformers and fixed things that needed to be fixed. And light was quickly restored. Light needed to be restored in the earth. And so over the next thousands of years after the fall of man, of the fall of Adam, light need to be restored in the earth. And so there was a lot of things that was being done. The Ten Commandments came, and they thought that would have turned the lights back on. But the light stayed off. People were still in darkness. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. It were, those were just rules that did not bring forth light at all. And so over the next thousands of years, man began, began to just exist in, in darkness and darkness and darkness. And here comes the sound of a light. Here comes a light. And the magis, the, the, the wise men, saw this special light in the sky. And they begin to wonder, what's that light in the sky? And the fact that they could see, they, they, these are wise men, so they could really see what's, or, or conceive what's going on. They found out that there is a king that's going to be born. And so they decided to follow that light. Somehow God was working on something in the background that nobody knew about because God always have a plan. It's not a backup plan. It's just the plan. It's a plan of salvation. God always have a plan. But he always give man the opportunity to correct themselves. But man was not strong enough, powerful enough. They were not educated enough. No education, rather, could have brought light back into the world, into a dark world. But here comes a star, a star shining in darkness. And then begin, begin to follow this star. 4,000 years went by. Just imagine, some of us cannot live in a house for 24 hours in darkness. We would, some of us would just go pulling our hair, hair out. I remember I'm from, I'm from Jamaica. Y'all know I'm from Jamaica, right? I was born there, raised there. And I rem listen, it's one of the greatest things to be, to see the stars in the skies. One of the greatest things, just seeing the stars in the sky. You see the stars in the skies because there's not, there isn't a lot of light that's dimming out. Amen? So I remember days upon days upon days where we did not have light. We did not have electricity. It was, it was a lamp that had kerosene in it. And you try to stretch that little thing and make it work. Now, you can't put water in kerosene because that won't work. So we couldn't stretch it. So we tried to make that light work and bring, bring forth some light in the house. And we could not wait until morning time comes. I want you to know that the world could not wait until morning time comes. The world was pleading for morning, pleading for light, because morning represents light. And the world could, was pleading and, and, and looking for some type of light. They were crying out in Egypt, send us a savior, send us a deliverer, because they were in darkness in Egypt. But thousands of years went by, and here comes a star in the sky. The time was near that God decided to restore power. The time was near that, you see, God had to restore power at the right time. 
And whatever God does, he does it at the right time. So it was time for power to be restored. I, you, I know you get excited when you see the UI truck coming down your street. And you know, oh, the power is coming on. They're going to fix my power. They're going to fix my power. And you can't wait for it. Boom. You, you, you know, the, have you ever heard the sound of light being restored? Boom. And sometimes they say, make sure you plug your refrigerator out and make sure you turn your breaker off. I don't do none of that. I just want to hear the I want to just see the, the light bulbs just come on. I just want to see everything just begin to light up in my house. And I want you to know that there was one light, which was a star, number one, that appeared in the sky and began to, it began to direct these wise men towards what they don't know just yet is that it will become or they will witness not a star or not a light, but the light. The star was guiding them to the light. And we got to, we, listen, God is sending some, and you can go with me. God is sending some stars in your life that will guide you to the light. And those stars could very well be somebody around you that God is using as an instrument to guide you to Jesus, the light of the world. This was no ordinary light. That's, that's what I'm talking about this morning. This was no ordinary light. This was a special light. It was a light that no one has never seen before. Word spread across the world that a king is coming. A king is going to be born. Something is about to happen. The, the, the Magi's had no clue what they were about to run into because they were about to run into not an ordinary light, but they were about to run into the light. Think of the price they paid to travel across. It said it came from the east, and it traveled all the way to Bethlehem. Think about the price they paid. Think about the roads they traveled. Listen, they did not travel I-95, I-80, or they didn't travel Route 25, or they didn't travel the Merritt Parkway. They traveled a old, ruggy, rough dirt road where it was not easy they traveled on camel backs they didn't travel in in uh, hondas and they didn't travel in in nice uh, cars and and plush cars they traveled because they were determined we got to get to the light and that i'm telling you that's why you got to be determined in your mind that no matter what road i have to travel Somebody traveling down a hard, rough, rocky road in your life, but get to the light. No matter what, get to the light. Jesus is showing you a light, the light of the world. Now, some people try to, you know, my, mankind, they try to figure things out. They say, well, was that really a star? They say, well, maybe it was a meteor. Perhaps it was an eclipse. Maybe it was a planet lit up. Maybe it was a comet. Or perhaps it was a, a supernova that's shining. But no, this wasn't any kind of light up in that sky. This was a, a supernatural star created by God that, uh, that it didn't just appear. It was there from the beginning of the world. The stars you see in the sky right now it doesn't just appear. Those are stars from light years away that you're just beginning to see. But God always had that star. The devil didn't know, but that star was still there. But it was at the appointed time that the wise men, a star, a star shining in the night, but it was always there. Jesus was, uh, it was always there. The star was always there. The light I'm speaking of, it permeates every crack, every crevice. crevice. I don't know if you ever turn on a light in a, in a dark place. And you, you ever see a light just under the door? You're in a, in a dark room, and light just finds its way. It just finds its way. It's like the, those little mice that in some of our homes, they know how to find their way through crevices. They're not to find their way to where they got to get to. The light is trying to 
gets through and pierce through a, a darkness. The light is about to pierce through every crevice, every area in our lives. And when that light appears, it shall be wonders. Uh, when the light becomes uh, uh, relevant, it begins to, when Jesus is about to be born. But first of all, he had to direct some people towards him, the light. Went across darkness. That type of light that went into areas. See, Jesus, for Jesus, it doesn't matter where darkness is, he'll find. You see, darkness don't find light, but light finds darkness. Darkness exists, but light will always find where darkness is. That's where some of us who, who were maybe on the streets, some of us who were lost in sin, light found us. Anybody glad that light found you? Light found you right where, listen, light found me uh -huh, in a bar. Light came and found me because I was drifting away. I was drifting away trying to run with my friends and my buddies, and I found myself in areas. But light came and grabbed me out of that darkness. Just imagine if that light hadn't found me. If Jesus had not found me, you would know such a person like me. Aren't you glad you know me? Aren't you glad I'm a part of you? Aren't you glad you shook my hands? Aren't you glad I smiled at you and you smiled back at me? Just imagine that I ignore the light. Somebody needs to find the light. They need to uh, answer to the light. They need to say, this is the light that I need in my life. The light permeated, came, uh, Jesus came, and rather the, 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 the shepherds came, and then the magis came, and they saw this little light in a manger. Now realizing this, this little light is about to be burst into a great big light. Darkness is about to back up because this light is about to come into a dark world. The world was just struggling in the midst of darkness. But Mary, the light was kicking in Mary. Light was, couldn't wait to get out of the darkness, but light knew it had to wait for nine months, not eight months, not six months, not three months. Light had to arrive on time, on schedule, and here comes light. The birth of a new light out of Mary, and this light grew up, and this light grew up and began to walk in its destiny that the light was called to do. This light grew up, and the Bible says this light went across every region, and this light began to permeate darkness. First of all, this light began to uh, restore blindness. As Jesus went across the region, he began to heal blindness. You, you see, uh, darkness cannot exist where Jesus is. Every time he shows up, darkness has to leave. So when he shows up, the blind sees. He showed up and the sick got healed. He showed up and the demon possessed was released. Jesus showed up and the woman that was sick for 12 years, guess what she did? She touched the light. And the Bible says she was made whole. So I don't know how many years that you've been sick and how many years you may have been going through. Whatever you're going through, just touch the light. The light of Jesus, just touch the light. And when you touch the light, the Bible says she was made whole. The light went about and saw some hungry people just like we did today and fed 5,000. The light went about the place and it saw that uh, there was a man that was lame. And the light shined on the man, and he began to walk. The, the light went about and saw some folks having a party. And they ran out of wine, Pastor Denise. And the light, said, the light said, they need some wine, some real good wine. This wasn't any kind of wine, y'all. Some real good. And the light says, set out all these buckets, and it created wine. And so the light went about the place, and the light went about and healed Peter's mother. The light went about and healed the man with leprosy. The light went about and darkness tried to come, and here comes a storm. And the light says, peace, be still. The light went about and was sitting in a boat, and the light began to walk out on water. What's that light on the water? Peter saw the light on the water, and Peter stepped out of the boat and began to 
walk on the water towards the light. Somebody needs to walk towards the light. Then the light says, uh, my, 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 my friend Lazarus is dead. And the light wept. And then the light said, let there be life. And the light said, Lazarus, there's more life inside of you. Come forth. You see, Jesus will call you forth out of a dark place and into his marvelous light. And that's what he did. He transformed us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want somebody just preach with me for a moment and say, the light. Hallelujah, the light of the world. That's what we're talking about, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. They thought they were seeing a star, but they were seeing an ordinary. This was an ordinary. This was the light of the world that's coming to save and rescue the world, the light of God. Evil men hate the light because the light exposed evil. And the light would always expose the light will always expose. We don't have to worry about exposing. But the light will always expose the evil hearts of men. And that's why you don't have to fight the battle on your own. You got to let the light of Jesus fight that battle for you. You don't have to fight. You don't have to take things in your own hands. But you got to call on the light. You got to call on Jesus, the light of the world. But Mary, Mary didn't know what she had inside of her. She had the light of the world. She was a carrier. Mary, the carrier of the light of the world inside of her. And that's the same light. The Bible says that's right here, right now. The light of the world. They try to kill the light. They put the light up on the cross. They stretch the light wide. He hung his, head, hung his head down. They try to kill the light. But Ottoman knows you can't kill this light. You can't dim this light. They try to, they place the light in, in a tomb. But on three days, at three days, the light said, I don't belong in this tomb. The light came out of the tomb. And the light of Jesus begins to come down inside of us. The light of God. I want to introduce you to the light that is not just about Christmas. It's not about gifts, but it's about the light of Jesus that wants to come into your hearts. That wants to come in and wants to permeate every single crack places, every single broken places. The light of Jesus wants to come in and he wants to sit in the midst of your darkness. When Jesus shows up, the darkness disappears. Some of you were in places where you needed some light and Jesus sent the light. And here you are, and those who are in darkness cannot understand that you were once in darkness, and they see something different inside of you. I don't know if there's any witness out there that you went back to a place where it was dark, and those who are still in darkness can't understand why the change has come out over you. They don't understand that you ran into the light, that you have the light of Jesus that's in. Anybody ever tell you that you're glowing? It's because the light of Jesus is glowing inside of you. The light of Jesus is inside of you because he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. And that light is in each and every one of us. Give everybody as soon as you can one of those. He is the light of the world. You're going to get something in your hands. Don't turn it on. Just follow my instructions. Jesus is the light of the world. Somebody say, Jesus is the light of the world. I don't want you to forget about that. That he is the light of the world. That the same very light that, that, we, that they saw, that light was always there. The light of Jesus was always there. And in the midst of all these killings, and in the midst of all these atrocities that's happened in the world, in the midst of all this craziness and this injustice, I want you to know that the light, hallelujah, is about to permeate the dark. You see, when they try to kill Jesus, he, didn't, he, he rose again from the, from the dead and he multiplied. I don't know if you try to kill some dandelions. Have you tried to kill dandelions? You don't kill dandelions by, by knocking them and pulling them up. You, you, you got to pull the roots up. Otherwise, what happens? It's going to multiply. 
it's going to multiply because the wind's going to take it and it's just going to multiply. And your whole yard won't be grass. It'll be a, a dandelion uh, yard. Because that's what happened with Jesus when they tried to kill him. They had no clue that he's about to get up on the third day and he's about to multiply. He's about to multiply this one light. Dim the lights. And I, I hope the broadcast will be able to see. Dim the lights. Or, or shut the lights. Whatever you got to do. Shut the lights. That one. That one's good. One more. One more. It's dark. This, this is, this is kind of li like what the world was in. Let me bring it more personal. This type of, this is the, this is what your life, some of our lives looked like before the light came into our lives. This is what some of us look like because the light isn't there just yet. But all in all, there was darkness in all of our lives and Jesus had to do something. Jesus had to do something. Here comes the light of Jesus. The Bible says on the third day he rose again. And he descended. And those who accepted him in their lives, they too become that light of Jesus. And as you begin to turn those lights on one at a time, just turn them on one at a time. Just keep, turn the lights on. Go ahead, push those buttons. If you didn't get a light, use your phones. We're about to do something. Did you get a, a light? If you didn't get a light, just, just turn the lights on or use your phone. Just, I want you to just hold the light up. Get your phone. Turn your phone lights on. If you don't have a light, turn your phone lights on. Come on, you won't run out of batteries. Turn those lights on. I wish y'all could see what I'm seeing right now. Somebody just look around and I want you to see. I want you to just look around. That's Jesus, the light of Jesus coming into people's lives. That's how the light of Jesus begins to permeate the lives of people. One light at a time. Come on, wave those lights. If Jesus is in your life, wave those lights. Come on. If you got the light of Jesus... If you got the light of Jesus inside of you, that's the light of Jesus coming into our lives, permeating our beings. Come on, if you, if you thank God for the light, if, you're, if you love that light that's inside of you, wave your light. It might be a little light, but I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Come on, let it shine. Let it shine. Somebody shine your light. Shine your light. Somebody open your mouth and say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Say, wherever I go, I'm going to let it shine. Say, wherever I be, I'm going to let it shine. So let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. Come on. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come on. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Listen. I'm about to sit down. But if you don't have the light of Jesus inside of you right now, you can get the light of Jesus inside of you. 
All you got to do is say, Lord, let your light come inside of me. I want that same light that everyone is waving and excited about. I want that light. If you want that light, wherever you are right now, I want you to just open your mouth and say, Lord, I need that light. I confess that I'm in darkness and I have not accepted you in my life as my Lord and Savior. So say, say, Lord, let your light come inside of me. I accept you as my personal Savior. I accept you in the midst of my darkness. So Jesus, come in my life right now. Let your light shine in my soul right now. Let your light shine in my heart. And let your light shine in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine Did you know, Mary, did you know <laughs> that the light of Jesus was inside of you? Oh, Mary, did you know yes. that that baby boy your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you this child that you deliver would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Oh, Mary, did you know that your baby Did you know that you're 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give a hand clap of praise. Come on, he is the great I am this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, are you glad that our God is the great I am this morning? Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, he's worthy. you to stand to your feet right now come on just clap your hands all over this building we come to lay our gifts before the king this morning hallelujah
challenging year we you know came through another a second year of COVID this is second Christmas of COVID amen and um, wow we accomplished so much doing this year yes we have we just persevered regardless of whatever was going on God he allowed us to just go through yes and listen we want to thank all of KBIM number one uh, for being there whether you were online hybrid in person virtual person whatever it is we want to thank you for still hanging on in there and and listen this is the new us okay this is a new us so we're going to minister to you whether you're online whether you're in person listen we're going to continue ministering amen yes it doesn't matter if you're in the building or online you still matter the pastor ken and pastor lisa we are here for you and we want you to be blessed Hey, we've been here a long time. We're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere at all. We'll be yeah. here another Christmas. Uh, so long as the Lord uh, desires, yes. we'll be here another Christmas, another new year. We we just completed our our um our consecration uh, back in November. Yes. But I'm telling you, I felt that we transitioned into a new year. Yes. New season, actually. Amen. New season, because my God, He is not restricted. Yes, yes, amen. Yeah. He operates in and out of time. Yeah. He does whatever he got to do. Anyways, we are really here to say Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. And a happy, prosperous New Year to you and your family. Yes. Check us out on December 31st. Yes, we will be having our uh, watch night service uh, starting at 7 p.m. And the reason why we're starting at 7 p.m. is because we want to have the service with our um fellow members and then you could go home and be with your family and see the new year come in. Yes, you said watch night service. Yeah, <laughs> That's what we night. call it, right? <laughs> what, New Year's yeah, Eve? Yeah, we're dated. Amen, yeah. whatever it is. I know, you just dated us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Alright, so um, check us out, alright? We'll have some partying gifts. Yes. Did I say that right? Parting gifts. Parting gifts. Yes, so get, uh, a lunchbox or, you know, just a little something that you can yeah. take with you once the service is 
Right, it's gonna be nice and decorated. You'll have a whole lot of goodies in it yeah, for you and your goodies. families to enjoy. Yeah. So listen, we love you. Whether you are of KBIM or not, we still love you. Thank you um, for checking us out too. If you haven't signed on and become a, a partner in the ministry or a member, thank you so much for your support all year long. Yes, we love you. Thank Amen. You so much. Amen. Merry Christmas. And a you. prosperous new year. Yes. God bless you God so bless much. You. Amen.